What's up you guys? A lot of you guys always ask me that. What kind of material should I use on my rental house, a new construction or what kind of cabinet? Well today, I'm over here at Abodian Cabinet with my friend, the owner of Abodian. <laughs> and we're gonna actually share with you guys what type of cabinet that I use in my rental house, townhouse or even custom home and what to look for from prices, material, from what you need to put in as a wow factor. So by the time you get done, if you ever do a rental property or a spec home or a custom home, you know exactly what type of cabinet to pick, how much you should spend. You guys ready? Let's do this. So let's say I walk in, I say, hey, I am actually buy a house and build an ADU in the backyard, for example, brand new, and I want something where aesthetically look nice, and I want it so that I can stay in budget where I can steal cash flow at the end of the day because I'm renting the property, what would you say to that person? So typically in that situation, what we'd recommend is going to be any of our laminate products, any of the flat slabs, something okay. like this kitchen right here okay. is just an excellent example of that. Yep. With this, you get the durability, okay. uh, the cost effectiveness, and at the end of the day, what I would recommend for anyone looking to do an ADU where they want a cash flow and they're looking at it from an investment, you know, keep the cabinet package simple, mm. but focus on layout. Okay. Layout itself is worth a lot more than jam packing it with accessories mm. and crazy finishes and all because, you know, we've seen some really interesting ones before where we've had to be like, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't put your sink next to your range, next to your fridge, mm. if you can avoid it because right. they'll have nowhere to actually put anything. Right. Nowhere to actually work off of. Right. Is flat cabinets that just plain design, is it more affordable than, for example, a flat that has grain in it? I would say no. No. Generally speaking, it depends on the quality of the finish that you're talking about when it comes to that plain color. Yeah. We have two different price point ones. We have a plain that's comparable to the wood grain. Yep. And then we have our super matte, which is that silky smooth one in the back that we'll show you guys yep. later. Is shaker cabinet typically more expensive than flat cabinets? It depends who you go with. If okay. you're going with stock cabinetry where they're building it in you know millions and millions of doors at a time the price point there is going to be a bit more competitive than they're set up to do with their laminates right. and the reason mainly for that is just because on a global side of things they have to look at global demand and focus right. on it accordingly right in seattle this is more of what sells right and at the end of the day with that this is more affordable when it's coming from us right. than it is from someone else some of the more southeast asian ones where they're looking at quantity and just getting that lowest price point the concern that comes with that is longevity yes if you're looking at it typically we'll see in about five years roughly the white cabinets are almost yellow oh interesting. and uh, okay. they start to yellow because they don't use as as good uv protectants and other things that keep that door good and durable right. explain to the viewers what makes a cabinet a really inexpensive cabinet and a really quality cabinet is it is it the door is it the hinge is it the box is it the material they use for the box educate me on that sure it's it's kind of a mix of all those things i think the biggest thing is you know it's the material used for the box mm -hmm. and then what you put in got it if you keep it simple you can keep it cheap yes well more affordable yes let's put it that way yeah um when it comes down to it there's a certain few things that we do standard because at this point you should never, ever, ever be buying cabinets without soft clothes. It's just unexcusable. So everything is standard with soft clothes. Nice. You know, it didn't bang. Right. Um, same thing with our drawers. Those would be the biggest real upgrades that should just be standards at this point. Outside of that, I would say it's just keeping a simple layout and keeping a simple interior material. Give us an idea, like let's say someone is watching, they go, you know what, I'm inspired. I'm gonna go build either a new ADU and I'm gonna sell them, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna build townhouses. What should they look for when they look for cabinets and setup? I'd say the biggest thing is uh, layout, keeping things simple, yeah. and uh, going with something a little more durable. So something like these laminates. This kitchen right here would cost approximately six grand, maybe even less. Okay. Um, which is a lot tighter than as we start to go up and rank up yes. in all of these, you'll see the price points get higher and higher and higher. How long does it take you guys to produce a typical set of cabinets for a typical spec townhouse? So a spec townhouse can be about four to six weeks. Oh, it's all built good. to order. We're pretty efficient with it. Um, as we start, you know, jumping up in the different price points, adding the accessories, built in appliances and all, the lead time does change. But for our spec builders, our spec townhome builders, we're quick, we're efficient. We like to keep things simple, straightforward, and boom, four to six weeks for a built to order product. So if you guys wanna actually now take your game to the next level and build more of a higher end spec 
Then the question is, what should you be looking for in cabinets and design? The last kitchen I showed you guys, the townhouse, those are typically, you know, if you're gonna spend 6,000 on the kitchen, right, a little more obviously for the bathroom and everything, but those townhouses go to anywhere between 600 to 800,000, okay? So now, Justin, we wanna go to the high-end spec. Mm -hmm. What can someone expect if they're gonna, first of all, how much of a house does someone should be selling if they're gonna spend this kind of a kitchen? I think at the end of the day, with something like this, you'd want to at least be at about $1.3 million uh, sale price before you start kind of putting in some of the accessories we have. Okay. This can fit to about like a 1.8, depending on how many accessories and how much flash you put in. Okay, it. that's good to know. Yeah. So what is the most important thing that for a builder or someone who's building how to sell in this price point, what, what is the half to they got to put in here? Otherwise, they're not doing justice to the price point. I think the bare minimum, the number one would honestly be uh, trash pullouts. Trash pullout, oh. It's, it's just, you you don't want your homeowners to be sitting there with a trash can on the side of this beautiful mm -hmm. kitchen. Why yeah. ruin the aesthetic? Right. Why make their life a little more miserable? Right. Keep something like this and it, and it keeps them happy. The other things would really be on adding maybe an accessory or two more. Along with that, it would be finishes. Finishes. Finishes, at the end of the day, this is still a spec. We yes. all need to remember that. We need to keep that price point in mind. Uh, so we want to limit somewhat the accessories and things we add in, but more focus on what's going to catch someone's eyes. Yes. I noticed, right, larger, deeper cabinets, right, compared to a typically townhouse. Yep. Yep. Along with that, I'd say drawers is a big part of it, and then adding in some other flash factors. Yes. Um, some of the flash factors we did here would actually be these lift-ups right here. Yeah, I love these. With man. this, when we press this button, that's a wow factor. Yeah, beautiful. I, I got exactly. this in my house. I love it. Yep. There's, yeah. It never gets old. Never gets old. It doesn't matter how many times you click this. I walk in, I push this, I close right. it. Just for the hell Almost of it. every day. <laughs> I, have, I have a blast doing right. it. Today I'm just inspired. Let me push the button real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other thing would be built-in appliances yeah, this is, is a big one as this well. One. Um, you really want to have built-in appliances to create more of that luxury feel. Right. Um, really keep that minimalistic aesthetic, keep that modern look continuing. Yeah. And really to do that, you want to try and integrate as much as you can. Now, what could someone expect to pay for a set like this in a $1.3, $1.8 million house on kitchen? So for that, if we're talking MSRP, it'd be closer to about 20 grand. 20 grand. Um, if you're cabinets, talking, right? correct, yep. for the cabinets. This is for the kitchen only. Yes, right? kitchen not only. Talking, not talking about master bathroom, bedroom, bath, all that stuff. Absolutely, and then if we're talking, you know, someone's building five or six of these, the numbers go down, yes. as, okay. as you'd expect. All right, there, and what's the lead time on something like this? Uh, something like this would still be at maybe about uh, seven to nine weeks. Okay, instead. not much more. Yeah, the only thing that really changes that for us in this one is the built-in appliances. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go check out a whole nother set of uh, cabinet layout, which is more for the high-end custom. So you gotta check out these cabinets, they're really cool. Let's go. If you gotta build a $3 million house and more expensive, this is probably what you wanna look at. What makes this one so much different? I think it comes down to the two main factors in the price point, uh, which is the materials used okay. and the accessories and functionality added in. When you look over here, what you'll see is, you know, we got porcelain tops. Of course, yep. We got super matte black with our integrated Gola rail system to make a completely handleless kitchen. So is the matte finishing more expensive than the gloss finishing that we just saw on the white kitchen we just saw? They're comparable. They're comparable. They're comparable. Um, I wouldn't say there's too much of a price difference on that. It just comes down to the aesthetic you're trying to go for. Got it. With gloss, it's kind of running out of fashion a bit now. I think high gloss white was like the, the thing, thing to do yeah. for the longest time. And now people are really moving towards that more muted matte. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Show me some of the nice feature of this high-end custom kitchen that someone will get if they spend this kind of money. Absolutely. I think the biggest things are, um, you know, going for that handleless look. To I keep love it that, Nice man. as clean. That's me. Yep. I'm, I'm like limitless, yeah. And <laughs> this is the next kitchen I'm doing, the next house I'm building, this is what I'm doing. No handle, everything just flawless. How does someone open it up and they got no handle? So basically, this one has an included guy uh, channel in it, okay. a metal channel that runs through yep. that you can then put your hands through. Nice. 
and pull on out. All right, look at that. I love it. With this, the next thing would be, um, you know, for these tall cabinets here, having a built-in appliance wall mm. would be the big thing. Typically in something like this, you might have your double oven, you might yes. have a coffee maker or something built into a beautiful appliance wall. But with that, you know, having a push to open. Nice, I love that. Cabinetry for any of our tall cabinets here along with some more unique accessories. Is, this is like is the, the 2023 new version of Lazy Susie, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a, a taller version. You don't typically see something like this. This is called the Le Mans. Yes. Of a porcelain, which, you know, going with a mitered, yes. thicker yes. porcelain right I here as well. I love this. Love this. And, and, you, and, and I know that you got, you know, with this kind of kitchen, I know that you blended in with some of the wood, right? And it's a real cool wow factor in this kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. The big, Thing with this kitchen is to create that modern luxury feel. Yeah. When someone walks in and sees this, it's the it's the luxury. It's that you know, the richness of the walnut yeah. veneer and the the overall feel you get from that. That's really what you go for with this. How much does someone expect to spend on a kitchen like this? And it's, and it's a three million dollar house either for sale or for the personal sake, how much does someone expect to spend on a kitchen like this? About 30 or $35,000. Yeah, you guys just been open now for about three years, right? How long has it been? Four years, five years? Longer, long? so we've been around since 2017. 2017? Yeah, that's quite right. A, quite a while. Quite a while now. Yep. And you got, you got blew up in Seattle, Yeah. right? Um, just for a rough idea, how many cabinets do you guys see a year? Right? We're sitting at uh, upwards of 10 to 12,000 cabinets a year. Wow. And where do you see you guys for the next five years? Um, we're, we're seeing significant growth. Yeah. I think for us, the biggest thing is our main focus to this day is really focusing on that client experience. Yeah. And we're seeing that translate into loyal customers and the ability to grow. Our focus is to really keep that, keep on the trends, keep on the quality that we provide and to continue to grow from there. So we're, you know, we're honestly expecting to at least double. Yeah, that's awesome. Now for a lot of you guys don't know, um, one of the reasons why I love working with these guys because they're always on time. You know what I mean? Uh, because when you build a spec home, especially these specs town we do, it's, you know, when you pay in interest, right? Things gotta be moving. Cabinets was one of those kind of things that, man, if they get delayed, everything else gets delayed. So I appreciate, you know, that because it's rare in business to find contractors and subs to be on, you know, like on top of their timeline. But the most important thing why I appreciate this, for a lot of you guys remember, we did this house called the Rave House, where we bought it, and then all of my friends and vendors and everything, they all came in and loved the vision, and they said, that's, let us provide the product for you for free. So they, they donated all the cabinets to this house, and you know, the landscaping, the cabinets, the bank, you know, everybody helped donate it in order for us to be able to buy the house we have, and we sold it, and we, we ended up netting like $240,000 net, and we donated 100% of the money to the Ray Foundation and the Seattle Sounder so we can build 26 soccer field for low-income kids before the World Cup get here in Seattle in the summer of 2026. So my brother, I appreciate that. Appreciate the you, man. Everything, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? We're gonna put a link for these guys so you guys can check out their business. You got ever need cabinet? You got a question about cabinet? Hit them up, all right? Until then, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Any comment you have, please comment below. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you all soon. Peace out.